Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, 7.30 a.m., and it's time for us to do our daily Bible study. So I'm happy you could join us. We are moving into one of the most memorized and most uh, well, well-known well uh, sections of Scripture. Many of you probably have this all memorized. We're going to be going through what is known as the model prayer. Well, I would call it a, a model prayer. We could call it the model prayer, or as it's often called, the Lord's Prayer. Now, to start off, the Lord's Prayer is obviously what most people are familiar with as a title, but really John 17, that's the Lord's Prayer. It's where we get to actually watch Jesus praying a decently extensive prayer, and we get to see what he says, and that was Jesus's prayers. But we're going to be going through and talking about the Lord's prayer today. And if you want to learn a thing or two about prayer, word on the street is you should watch uh, Calvary Ellensburg's live stream. I'm assuming they're live streaming tonight's service should be a whopper of a message on prayer. Can I get an amen, dad? Eh? I think my dad's talking about prayer tonight up at Calvary Ellensburg. So now, in this manner, therefore pray. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago as we were looking at the prayer of Jabez from First Chronicles chapter 4 at the Revival Church Sunday morning. And I emphasize this because it says, in this manner, pray. Please note that nowhere in here, and I'm not trying to rain on a parade, but nowhere in here does it say, pray these words. Okay, It doesn't say, pray this prayer, pray these words. It says, pray in this manner. And the Greek word for manner means manner. And you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's the word there. I mean, pray like this. Pray in this kind of fashion. So the fact that it's really common for people to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, it's it's not um, really what we were called to do. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying the Lord's Prayer. In fact, I think there's something beautiful and unifying when a group of Christians all know the words to a prayer that we could all pray together um, if done in sincerity, right? And so there's something cool about that. But the main emphasis is to to make sure we have a right understanding of the text, right? That's our job as Christians is to understand the Bible and to understand what it's really telling us and not, you know, the traditions of our churches or the traditions of man. But so in, in this manner, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And yes, it's hard for me to read this, not in Elizabethan English. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? I mean, just, you have to. It's just the way it's supposed to be done. But now, our Father, we could break down word for word. The first word of this prayer is you declaring your part in the body of Christ. It's not my Father who art in heaven. It's our Father who art in heaven. By describing him as our father, you are describing all other Christians as your brothers and sisters. Father, you are an adopted child purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why we cry out, Abba, Father, because he's our dad. In many ways, we should think of God in that sense, as a loving father. In heaven. And in here, we have the sovereignty and power of God. So, I mean, every one of these words, you could unpack it and kind of get meaning out of it. Our, I'm part of the body of Christ. Father, he's not a distant, you know, God. He's a loving father of a God. And he's in heaven. He's sovereign and in control of all the earth. He isn't an idol here on earth, not something made with hands. Hallowed be your name. Now, 
Hallowed means to be revered as holy, considered holy. Now, your name. That's been a, a, a discussion I've had over this last week. So, onoma, the, the word for name in the Greek, it, in the culture, in the language, it, it, it's something that is much more than what we think of today. Is the point of the Lord's Prayer to honor God's name or God? And so there's this connection between the word name and the person. And, and you can't take them apart. And it's something that we might miss out in English. And yeah, I'm not going to get through this whole prayer in one day. Okay, we'll, we'll continue this tomorrow because uh, I'll stop here. This first part of the prayer is quintessential to the rest. And I think actually if we spend time here, then maybe tomorrow we'll take out the rest of the prayer. But you see, his name, the name of God. Now, there's all your name is a is a strong tower. It is a shield. It is all these things. The name of God, and and yet God has said He's magnified His word even above His name. But we have to understand the name because we should also be familiar with praying in His name. And Jesus talks about praying in my name. So this is where I think confusion sets in sometimes because praying in the name of God or in the name of Jesus, it has nothing to do with their name, if that's not confusing. You see, God has a name and it is the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H. We don't know the vowels, but most scholars believe it's Yahweh. Others, and more traditionally, Jehovah. But those are two names in the same. It, it all depends on where you drop the vowels. And because the name was revered as so holy, no one ever wrote down the vowels for the name. Now, back in the day, they didn't use vowels on anything. But here, like later on, they started adding vowels, but they never did for God's holy name. And then we have the name of Jesus. Now that one, we know the vowels. We know how to say it. Though Jesus, Isus, what we know from the Bible, is Greek. And it's worth noting that more than one Hebrew name would transliterate into Jesus or Isus in the Greek. So actually, there were Jeshua's. Yeshua, the most common one we, we know of and believe Jesus' name was, there's Yehoshua, and there's others, and any one of those would be Jesus in the Greek. And so sometimes I throw out there that, you know, we actually can't say uh, with absolute certainty what Jesus' Hebrew name was. Crazy, but it's true. Um, now, the name part. Anything you pray in my name, there's power in the name of of Jesus. You see this idea of the name, it, it describes the character of the person, the will of the person, who the person is, their very essence. That is what the name of God, the name Jesus represents. What's interesting is the YHWH, the Tetragrammaton, that's just the fancy word for when you just have the letters and you don't fill the vowels in, the I am that I am. Tell them I am sent you. The, the Hebrew from those letters, if we trace it back, it, it, it does have this idea of eternity, of everlasting, the I am statement. So when he says I am sent you, that would be um, likened unto his name. I am, I'm, I'm eternal, everlasting. Jesus, Yeshua, Yehoshua is Jehovah, is salvation. God is salvation. That's a good name for him. But praying in the name of God or in the name of Jesus has nothing to do with using their name in your prayer. Examples. 
if I say a prayer, it's either according to God's will or it's not, right? I mean, that makes sense. Either God supports my prayer or he doesn't. I mean, I could be praying a selfish prayer, praying a miss, right? There's all those examples of why God would not support my prayer. Now, if I pray for something and it is in God's will, he desires to receive that prayer. If I omitted Jesus' name and did not say in Jesus' name at the end of my prayer or whatnot, do you think that's going to stop God from honoring the prayer that he wants to honor? On the flip side, if it's a prayer that's outside of God's will, does the inclusion of the name of Jesus change anything? It doesn't really, does it? And so this is where we, we find that the idea of power in the name of Jesus, it, it, it's not having anything to do with the, the letters that form a word that we call him. And good, I'm happy, like, Alejandro, if confused about how this works. You see, this came up recently as I was just sharing. I didn't have an idea, I had no idea this is where things were to go this morning. But I recently shared about how I believe there's a lot of confusion in the church about the name of Jesus because people use it kind of like an incantation, like a spell. It sounds kind of heavy, but when you hear people in Jesus' name, in Jesus, it's like they're, it's almost like their emphasis is on the phrase in Jesus' name, as if the phrase does anything. But biblically, that's, that's not what it means. We have to remember, too, again, that this, these were written 2,000 years ago, and to those people, there was a meaning. When we have hermeneutics, how we interpret the Bible, we have to take history and culture into account that grammar and phrases meant things to those people that maybe don't have the same connection to us, right? I mean, when they talked about circumcision, I mean, it, it had a very definite meaning. Now, obviously in a Bible study, we might be thinking that way, but when you just talk about circumcised and uncircumcised people, that doesn't, you know, if you didn't have a Bible background in today's culture, it, it wouldn't ring the same, would it? But to them, it had a very definite meaning. And so we need to learn the culture and we need to understand what does this mean? And so in my name, so what Jesus is talking about is if you're praying my will, like-mindedness, Someone who is one with me, praying for what I desire to be done. <laughs> You're getting a mini sermon on this topic right now. And so, but it, and it, maybe it is, it's just so simple. It's to know that praying in Jesus' name, because when he says things like anything you pray in my name, flip forward a little bit here. I actually have two chapters coming to mind. And so we'll find out which one's which. Um, I'm actually drawing a blank. Where is the praying in Jesus' name? It's like Matthew. And I'm going through, it's like 17, 18, 19. And it's short. You guys probably already posted and I'm like figuring out where it is. Um, regardless, praying in my name, anything you pray in my name, like he says, I'll do it. So once again, either that could mean one or two things. When Jesus says, anything you pray in my name will be done. That's, that's, and so the Bible says that, so it can't be wrong, right? He said it can't be wrong. And it shouldn't be minimalized, like trying to like find a way to excuse why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, Jesus just straight up said, if you pray it in my name, it's going to be done. So either I say a prayer and include the words in Jesus' name, and therefore it has to be done, or that's not what in my name means. And it means praying according to his will with his power, for his will. You see, as we pray for things, and that's actually one possible 
sermon subject for Sunday morning. I've got such great stuff to work with this week. I'm having a really hard time narrowing it down. I thought about just doing like an hour and a half long sermon and just doing like five chapters of, of First Chronicles. But one of the chapters, the first chapter we're covering, the main topic of the chapters is dealing with unanswered prayer. When you pray about something that's really important to you and it doesn't get answered. But we have to remember, again, if we pray in Jesus' name, what we pray will happen. Well, as we learn to pray and pray more, one thing we're going to learn to do is understand that God's will is the perfect will. And if we pray for God's will to be done, whatever happens was God's will. Now, we might not like what happens, but this is where God works all things to the good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And we need to now be able to wrap our brains around that and believe it and accept it, that if it happened, God has a plan. And we don't always get the plan. And we're maybe not going to always or even often have the privilege of seeing how that works out in this life. But praying in his name is praying according to his will. It's not just bold like, this is an okay prayer, and this is an absolute horrible prayer, so these are in his will. No, not necessarily, because what you see in First Chronicles chapter 17 is David has a desire. He wants to build a house for God. It's a good desire. It's a holy desire. He has all the right intentions, all the right hope and love. I mean, everything is perfect about David's prayer. And God says, no, I have a different plan. And with David, we can see how those things play out. But with us, we don't always see. Why doesn't God answer my prayer the way I'm wanting him to? The beauty is if you follow David through that chapter and the next, you can also see how we handle it when God doesn't answer our prayers the way we want. But as far as praying in his name, it's understanding we're praying his will. It has nothing to do about the words you use. In fact, the Bible makes it pretty clear that we can pray with groanings and the Holy Spirit knows how to interpret those and understand the things we're saying. The words we say when we pray, I want to say don't matter. I'm sure there's some you know, caveat to that. But in a sense, yes. God knows our hearts. There is no formula to prayer. We don't need to say the right things in order to add power to our prayer. If you want to add power to your prayer, Live a holy life. If you want to add power to your prayer, be holy and seek the Lord. And just do what Christians are supposed to do. And you will find you'll have more power in your prayer. So, there we go. Introduction, one verse of the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. Done. In this manner, therefore, pray. So how do we pray? Well, we're going to pray according to God's will, to our Father in heaven. And now... Tomorrow, we'll be able to actually look at the specific points. And what's fun is we'll be able to pray these points with power because of our better understanding of God's will and the word of God. So join me tomorrow morning at 730 if you want to find out the specifics on how to get your prayers answered. Praying with power. Boom. All right, guys. God bless. I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.